Why am I here? What am I doing here? How have I managed to intersect the crowd at this two-hour concert where the first half can't even be reckoned a concert? It's six years to the day after my True Arts Festival debut, but now I'm part of the audience. I can use an explanation as to how the crowd liked the warm-up disc jockey, not even playing his own music. Why are these millennials going crazy over him? Perhaps, I don't understand, because I'm a hard rocker waiting on Jesse McCartney, the 32-year-old former teen idol that I used to like and whom wanted to use this occasion to relaunch his career. But more importantly, why am I taking this in? Am I only here because Caitlin and Sierra literally dragged me into this fiasco that even began 10 minutes late? Yet there I stood, trying to send the butterflies in my stomach back to their greenhouse. Kate and Sierra had told me to consider the affair like a normal social event, a guise for their peer pressure in forcing me to attend. But what was their issue with me having a change of heart for the artist? The emotion inside me was initially nostalgic in flavor, but eventually that would translate into disinterest. After all, I'm not our top sports writer for no reason. And that's when it hit me. Ya nie hachu hadit na concert! And I will do anything! in my power to escape. Suddenly, however, about 20 minutes after the disc jockey ended his set, the spotlights dim under the PSAC scoreboard before a man walks up to the microphone stand and picks up an electric guitar. It turns out he was to be the musician for McCartney's vocals, preceding the singer out of the main stage by just a few minutes to raucous cheering. Surprisingly, but not so much at the same time, McCartney takes his position and immediately begins tapping out a tonality or rhythm on what appeared from a distance to be some MIDI controller. But the crowd didn't care. They had a performer to entertain them. And so the young, potent, exciting Lakers some of whom came from all over the world to study on our beloved hill, absorb the atmosphere, and revel in its flavors of pop music. It was soon my turn to join in, and I found them all. The tall footballer from Toronto who now does eyelashes for a living. The shorter one from Rochester, marking nearly six months with her military boyfriend. Throngs of Yinzers, Southtowners, and Cuyahogans, emblematic of Laker pride. And the girl from Parma and her best friend from Meadville that dragged me here. And amongst this crowd stood me, the young sports writer and hard rocker from New Jersey, recognizable to the majority of our audience that night. Reflected in all of them and radiated to McCartney, was this overwhelming emotion that he belonged to them, a member of their community, where it just so happens that he can sing, and he's popular. The audience appeared to be coordinated like the spotlights, connecting perfectly with the music, the lights at once flashing a bright gold, as if every song was performed in E minor, and I could just hold my own and I reckon that I could possibly break no unwritten rules. And then, there's more to comprehend. It's during an instrumental break where McCartney's arms are held high above his head, prompting another coordinated response that, in retrospect, I realize needs to be translated to basketball games in our new arena. For the first time all night, the emotion is electric and truly surreal more than anything I could have possibly fathomed. The whole performance is like the famous Canadian Railroad Trilogy 
but much more personally reflective. It hits all the feels and keeps everyone engaged in distinct movements. From the current music to his entire repertoire and back again, from the pop to the hip hop to the rap, not to mention the crowd that went back and forth all over the place all night. It's amazingly surreal. But me thinks you and that crowd are moving way too slow for hip hop. Start dancing! <laughs> 